So today we're benchmarking a processor that hasn't even come out yet. Kind of. So the AMD Ryzen processors just launched and I have one running in my system behind me. It's an 1800X with 8 cores and 16 threads. So I decided I would benchmark a 1600X, which I do not own and neither does almost anybody else on the planet. So the way I do this is really simple. I just disable two of my cores in my machine and that gives me six cores and 12 threads, which is exactly what the 1600X will ship with. Now, before I throw up all the charts that you can take a look at and all sort of talk through, I do want to point out that since these are just Ryzen cores and it's six of them instead of eight of them, there really wasn't a whole lot of surprises, especially in single threaded performance. Now, there was one gaming surprise in Project Cars, and you'll see that immediately what the surprise there is. But let's go ahead and jump straight into the benchmarks. So first up is the Cinebench R15 single threaded score and no surprise here, the i7-4790K running at 4.7 gigahertz does beat out the simulated Ryzen 1600X. However, the gap is not gigantic and then I did throw in the FX8350 running at 4.6 gigahertz just to see how badly it gets crushed in all these benchmarks. As expected, the multi-thread test does heavily favor the simulated Ryzen 1600X where it pretty much destroys everything in its path and it scales very well as long as the software is optimized for multi-thread performance. The CPU Z single threaded test gives us sort of our first surprise where the 1600X actually does top the 4790K and of course both of them are still beating up on the FX8350. And as expected in the multi-threaded side of things, again, the 1600X would trounce both the FX8350 and the 4790K. It is a little bit surprising to see the 8350 hanging so close to the 4790K in this test though. So a little, little sort of hat tip to the bulldozer architecture. In the Firestrike Extreme benchmark, the simulated 1600X does barely edge out the 4790K but it is worth pointing out that the Firestrike Extreme benchmark is optimized pretty well for those multiple threads, whereas other real world gaming probably won't give you the same returns. And on the physics score, again, the 1600X does open up that lead a little bit more over the 4790K, and that should be expected with six cores and 12 threads versus just four cores and eight threads. Now in a real world scenario in Adobe Premiere, the render times are on the screen there and you'll notice the 4790K actually does beat the 1600X. Now this could be for a couple different reasons. First off, I'm using an older version of Premiere Pro so that may actually benefit the 4790K there as newer versions may be better optimized for multiple cores but also uh, Adobe itself does not take advantage of multiple cores as well as it could. It's not fully optimized. It does use them all, but it does not push them all to 100%. So again, the 4790K may benefit from that lack of optimization as well. And now for more of a gaming scenario, the Heaven benchmark favors the 4790K, though the gap isn't that big until you get down to minimum frame rates where the 1600X simulated just doesn't even come close to where the 4790K does, but on average it is quite close. Though when you move over to the GTA 5 benchmark, the 4790K absolutely destroys the 1600X, and this has been the biggest complaint about Ryzen so far, is that it's a great productivity chip if you are on a budget, but gaming wise, it's not so great. That trend continued into Fallout 4 where again the 4790K was able to handily beat the 1600X and the aforementioned one surprise of the group was Project Cars which is not really known as an overly CPU bound game but you'll notice that in every scenario the 1600X both average, maximum and minimum frame rates does edge out the 4790K in all three of those tests. Now, the truth of the matter is that it's not really fair to compare the 4790K to a 1600X in the first place. The 4790K is at the top of the consumer grade Intel product stack where the 7700K currently is and that chip is $350 where the 1600X is just gonna be retailing at least supposedly for $259 when it releases in Q2 this year. So a better comparison would actually be a quad core i5 like the 7600K, which will slot in just below the 1600X's 
price point, but I don't have access to one of those, so I can't really give you that performance comparison. However, it is worth pointing out that right now Windows does not do a great job of taking advantage of the multi-threading that Ryzen gives us, so these numbers may actually increase substantially on the Ryzen side, whereas on the Intel side, we know what we're working with, and Windows is already optimized for the Intel platform, so Ryzen's numbers may continue to climb. So the last question would be, should you buy the 1600X if you are a gamer? Right now, if you're just a gamer, Probably not, stick with an i5. However, if you do productivity also on the side, things like streaming, or maybe you work from home sometimes and you're a, a professional that works with audio or video or photo editing, things like that, then you could probably take advantage of multiple cores or the extra multiple cores and especially the extra threads. So there's a potential there that you should buy the chip. However, like I said, if you're just a gamer, probably pass on the 1600X for now until we see what kind of performance we get once Microsoft optimizes Windows for the multi-threading that is within Ryzen, and once game developers start actually taking advantage of all these extra cores that Ryzen is giving us. If you like this video, then give me a like down below. Also, share, subscribe, all those great things. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. I'm Shane from Hoosier Hardware, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.